Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you the Victoria Cross, a suspense play starring Mr. Herbert Marshall. What is it? I was dreaming again. Please, I can't stand it. Please, give me... I'm sorry, Captain. The doctor said no more. I've got to. I want to sleep without dreams. It'll make me sleep, make me forget. I'm sorry, but it won't help. The doctor doesn't want you to take any more. Those are his orders. Orders? What is it to him? He doesn't know. You're going to take that schoolmaster position you told me about. You'll have to get well. No, I want to... You've been taking that medicine too long now, Captain. It's better this way. Just be strong for a while. It'll be better. Strong. I wish I was strong enough to wipe that professional kindness from your face. I'd like to kill you. In just a moment, Mr. Herbert Marshall in the first act of The Victoria Cross. Water. 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 What's that, Wilcox? A desert rat? That, my dear Senator, is an ordinary battery dying of thirst. Come, come, Wilcox. Come is the word, Senator. Everyone comes to the Autolite Stay Full Battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Why, an Autolite Stay Full Battery is so cautious of water, it makes a camel look like a double-deck water tank. That's all, dear all, Wilcox. That's factual, Senator, because the Autolite Stay Full has over three times the liquid protection of batteries without Stay Full features. Water, water everywhere. And furthermore, Senator, the Autolite Stay Full Battery has fiberglass retaining mats protecting every positive plate for longer life. Seventy percent longer life, in fact as proven by tests conducted according to SAE minimum life cycle standards. Give me that longer life, Wilcox. So, friends, see your neighborhood Autolite battery dealer and ask him for an Autolite Stay Full, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. Right. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, with the Victoria Cross and the performance of Mr. Herbert Marshall, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. Wait here in the hall, Bateman. I'll call you. All right, sir. Come in, please, Ord. Yes, sir. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Ord, I have no intention of sermonizing upon the dignity of our school. You and Bateman are both aware that at Hoxley, the boys are on their honor during examinations. Yes, sir. And yet, knowing this, you deliberately passed information to him. Why? I... I don't know, sir. Come, I thought we were friends. You've never lied to me before. I don't know, sir. Really. Please don't ask me. Did you know when you arranged this that you could both be expelled? Yes, sir. Nevertheless, you, who as far as I know have never been particularly friendly with Bateman, ran the risk of expulsion for his sake. Again, I ask you why. Did he threaten you? Uh, No. No, why do you ask that? There must be a reason. All right. He's the most popular boy in school. He's captain of the cricket and rugger teams. Nobody likes me. I I want him to be my chum. You're not telling the truth, Old. Wait outside, please. Yes, sir. Send Bateman in. He wants to see you. Sit down, Bateman. Thank you. Well, what have you to say for yourself? Nothing. Take off your cap. Do you deny cheating? Why should I? You're being insolent, Bateman. And you will address me as sir. Yes, sir. What do you think this will do to your reputation as the most popular boy in the school? I don't think it will do anything, sir. We shall have to allow the headmaster to decide that. You wouldn't sneak to Mr. Walkley, now would you, sir? You're one of the older boys, Bateman, but you're still not too old to be caned. 
by you, sir? It's time you learn that you're still a schoolboy and in need of discipline. By going to Mr. Walkley's office. Come on. Stand up. All right. And while you're telling Mr. Walkley about me, will it be all right if I tell him about you in the village? About the dagger and drum? What's the matter, Mr. Vale? Is it Maggie Splain? She knows a lot of men, but I'll bet she doesn't know any of them as well as she knows you. Does she? May I go now, sir? The position of a housemaster at an English public school is one of traditional conformity and demands of its holder the utmost of individual principles. I had come to Hoxley during the last year of the Second World War, directly upon my release from the hospital. And through seniority in 1949, found myself housemaster of Peckham House. The years had not been pleasant, but I had felt at least an uneasy security until the day of the examination, when the model British schoolboy Giles Bateman had destroyed the security and left in its stead the fear. And the fear grew. That evening after supper, I sat at my desk in the study hall and wondered about the boys before me, quiet with their books and scribbling. Did they know? Did they all know? What had this terrifying child with the body of a man told them? He sat, head bowed over his ancient history, the most popular boy at Hoxley. Evening, sir. What's the idea of coming in here like this? I've got to talk to you, Maggie. I'm busy. I've got to talk to you. What time do you get off? Not till ten, and I've got a date. You'd better order something. They'll think it queer. Anything, anything. Half a pint and right you are. What did you tell Giles Bateman? Here you are, sir. What did you tell him? He knows about it. Go on, how can he? He said so. He mentioned your name. You've talked to him, haven't you? Hmm, what if I have? He's a nice young bloke, and I can talk to him wherever I want, can't I? But I didn't say nothing bad about you. What did you say? Well, just that I knew you, that you were a nice, generous gentleman. I should never have trusted you. I didn't ask you to. You came to me, don't forget. I'll thank you not to be so high and mighty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you sure you didn't say anything else? I can't talk no more. The boss is watching. Did you say anything else? No, no. Go away. Maggie! In a jiffy, sir. I returned to the school undiscovered and made my rounds at Peckham House, now silent. And as I looked into each darkened room and listened to the sounds of sleep, I wondered if I could at this moment give each boy an insight into his future and the tragedies lying before him, granted the power, how many would choose to awake in the morning and how many would choose never to awake again. There was one room outside of which I stopped, listened, which was door I did not open. A week passed, and once more I allowed myself the luxury of an uneasy security. I convinced myself that whatever Giles Bateman knew about my visits to the Dago and Drum, it was not sufficient to cause my arrest. I determined to avoid any further visits, at least until the boy was out of school. And then, the afternoon of a half-holiday, Francis Ord came to me. May I speak to you, sir? Of course, Ord. Come in. Would you like some tea? No. No, thank you, sir. The cake? I, I'm not hungry, sir. Oh. What's the matter? Oh, nothing, sir, nothing. I thought that we were friends. You used to like to have tea with me and talk. Well, I, I've been very busy, sir. I'm swatting. I want to get better marks. I'm not angry with you about the examination last week. I know it wasn't your fault. That's why I didn't take the matter any further. Yes, sir. I suppose you think that's showing favoritism, don't you? In a way, I'm cheating. Oh, no, no, sir. It was very sporting of you. Sporting, was it? You came to see me about something, or what is it? Sir, I, I should like your permission to change my room. Oh? Yes, sir. Don't you get along with Watson Minor? Well, 
Bateman has asked me to share his data. Has he? You want to? Yes, sir. I want to very much. You're lying. He's holding something over your head. You can tell me. I'm your friend. I'll help you. Thank you, sir. Do I have your permission to move, sir? Because I didn't have the courage to question him any further, I gave him permission. And as he left the room, I saw the look of the condemned in his eyes. I had given him the privilege of becoming a bully's bootblack. The school term waned. I was very careful. Except in my ancient history form, I saw very little of Francis Ord. Bateman thrived in the glory of his victories, his top marks, his prowess on the playing fields of old Hawksley. This was his last term, and for me, that meant freedom once again from the fear. Then, three weeks before final exams, headmaster Mr. Walkley called me to his study. Come in. Good afternoon, Mr. Vale. Do sit down. Thank you, sir. Just had an interesting talk with Giles Bateman. Very interesting. Oh, very, sir. I want to do something for the boy, Vale. I'm petitioning for a scholarship at Cambridge. As Bateman's housemaster, your signature to this letter on his behalf will be of inestimable value. After all, you know him better than any of us do. Yes, I do, sir. May I read the letter? Of course. It is rather glowing, I admit, but what can one say? He is all of these things. Don't you agree? I'm sorry, sir. I can't sign it. You can't. I won't sign it, sir, because I can find only one truth in the letter. He has been a successful athlete, nothing more. Nothing more? You speak of his integrity. He has none. His leadership, he rules through fear. You don't know what you're saying. You forget, sir. I'm his housemaster. I know him better than any of you. You praise his high principles. He's a cheat. You point out his sense of fair play. He's a bully. I've heard enough, Mr. Vale, quite enough. Needless to say, I'm shocked beyond words. I can only construe from this monstrous outburst that you're allowing an entirely personal malice to sway your judgment. I'm sorry, sir. Your apology is not sufficient, sir. I suggest that you return to your quarters and give the matter serious thought, very serious thought, Mr. Vale, for your own good. It was a curious thing, and I felt almost lightheaded as I walked back to my rooms. For a moment, I had forgotten my personal involvement and stated quite objectively, I felt, what I knew to be the truth about Giles Bateman. I even felt that I might have said the same thing had Bateman been there. Did you sign the letter, sir? What are you doing in my room? Get out. Did you sign it? I told you to get out. Do you want a good hiding? Do you want me to tell the head about you? You can't bluff me again, my boy. You know I've gone to the Dagon Drum. That silly girl told you about my visits. It's not enough for your filthy blackmailing. You can't bluff me. She told me enough to send you to prison, Mr. Vale. What did she tell you? I'd be afraid to tell you, but I wouldn't be afraid to tell Mr. Walkley or the constable. What did she tell you? You wouldn't hit a schoolboy, would you, Mr. Vale? They'd want to know why. Get out! Get out! You will sign that letter for me, won't you, Mr. Vale? I knew then that I would have to sign the letter. Or if I didn't, something would have to be done about the boy. And because of my fear, I did something that I had promised myself I would not do. I went to the Dagon drum and to Maggie's plane so that I would forget. Perhaps forget too much. <laughs> Autolite is bringing you Mr. Herbert Marshall in the Victoria Cross. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Water. 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 There's that battery again, Will Cull. What a thirst. But let me tell you about the famous Autolite Stay Full Battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. I'm listening. Why, the Autolite Stay Full has over three times the liquid protection of batteries without Stay Full features. 
That advantage alone helps overcome one of the greatest causes of battery failure. You don't say so, Wilcox. Oh, I do, Senator, and more, too, because the Autolite Stay Full battery has fiberglass retaining mats protecting every positive plate to prevent shedding and flaking and give longer life. Yes, sir, 70% longer life as proven by tests conducted according to SAE minimum life cycle standards. Me for an Autolite Stay Full. Right, Senator. So, friends, see your neighborhood Autolite battery dealer and ask him for an Autolite Stay Full battery, the battery that needs water only three times a year in normal car use. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Herbert Marshall in Elliot Lewis's production of The Victoria Cross, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I have no memory of what I did or where I went later that night. But the next morning in Baseman's room, I found myself standing over what had once been the most popular boy in school. During the war, there have been other dead bodies, but this one aroused within me no feeling whatsoever. There was neither triumph nor sorrow. I was aware only of the four walls of his room and the stained cricket bat on the floor. Has anything in the room been moved, sir? Mr. Bay. Yeah, I, I, I beg your pardon? The inspector's talking to you. Oh, I'm sorry. That's quite all right, sir. I understand. Uh, has anything been moved? Not as far as I know. As housemaster, it's your duty to make the rounds at night. Yes. Uh, would you say that there was any sign of trouble last night? Not so far as I know. Uh, tell me, sir, how did the deceased get along with Francis Ord? Well, it was Baton who requested Ord to share his quarters. Mm. What about his other schoolfellows? We admired him tremendously, Inspector. I may say without fear of contradiction that he was the most popular boy in school. Well, I'm afraid, Mr. Walker, he must have been extremely unpopular with somebody here. I, uh, I should like to have the door of this room locked until the laboratory men arrive. Of course, sir. Shocking. Shocking. Poor boy. Well, I imagine you'll want to question Francis Ord, Inspector. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, well, he's detained in Mr. Vale's quarters. You'll find me in my study. Very well, sir. I, uh, I can tell you, sir, that a murder investigation involving schoolboys is something out of my line. Now, I'd be obliged if you'd stand by. Well, I'd be happy to. Uh, Mr. Vale, what did you think of Baton? I... Oh, it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to answer that. Uh, Francis Ord. Very fond of him, Inspector. He's, he's quite shy, but he's a sensitive lad. From what he has told me, I know that his family life has been quite unhappy. He lost his mother when he was eight. His father remarried, and I gather that he feels, well, forsaken. Is he happy here? Happier, perhaps, than at home. That he doesn't get on too well here? I'd say he's about the most unpopular boy at Hoxley. Rather strange, don't you think, sir? The two lads, such complete opposites, so chum together? Yes, perhaps it is. Did you talk to him this morning before he tried to run away? Ord ran away? You didn't know? Hmm. Well, here we are. Ord... This is Inspector Forbes. He wants to ask you some questions. <coughs> well, young fellow, my lad, you were caught trying to run away this morning. That doesn't look very good, you know. Don't you think it'd be better if you told us exactly what happened? Francis. Hmm. I think he might be trying to protect somebody, don't you, sir? Soon or later, things are found out, Francis. Tell him the truth. I don't want you to protect anyone. Why shouldn't I protect anybody? Nobody cares about me. All right. I'll tell you the truth. I killed him. It doesn't matter now. I hated him. He was a dirty, filthy, rotten swine. I did it, Mr. Vale. I hit him with my cricket bat. I hit him... And I hit him. And he fell down. And he cried. And he begged me to stop. And I didn't. I didn't stop. And I felt strong. Why did you kill him? Inspector, I... Yes, Mr. Vane. I... 
think we should leave him alone. Yeah. Not very pretty to hear a confession like that, especially from a kid. What happens to him now? Hmm? I should take him back to London, but I'm not going to just yet. There's something else that he hasn't said. It's not finished. It wasn't finished. The inspector wasn't a brilliant man, but he was diligent. I felt he had done this sort of work for a long time and done it very well. And in finding why Francis Ord had killed Bateman, perhaps he would find out about me. Find my secret. He asked me to accompany him. He questioned other masters and other schoolboys. It was in the gymnasium that we found the very physical sportsmaster, Samuel Jennings. He had great style at the wicket. Reminded me of Jack Hobbs. I can tell you one thing about him, Inspector Forbes. The school's going to miss him. Don't you agree, Mr. Vale? He was the very best of the British schoolboy, Mr. Jennings. Oh, I wouldn't go so far as to say that. Nothing namby-pamby about him. He was a bit of a lad. Take a nip now and again, and there was a bit of fluff in the village that caught his eye. Oh? Yes, the barmaid at the Dagger and Drum, Maggie Splain. He broke her bounds a couple of times to see her, but of course, he wasn't the only one. Uh, Mr. Jennings, uh, what do you think of young Ord? Well, to tell you the truth, I don't, and I never did. He's a coward and a liar. The boys call him a nasty little beast, and that's what I think he is. Soppy. Nothing. I'm sure you've been very helpful, Mr. Jennings. Yes, thank you very much. Well, Mr. Vale, I think I've learned as much as I can for the moment. Oh, I want to call Scotland Yard. If you could direct me to a telephone, I won't trouble you anymore. You'll find one in the gymnasium office, just there to the left. He knew about the dagger and drum now. He knew about Maggie's plane. Now he was going to call Scotland Yard and he'd find out more. He'd find out about me. I couldn't leave the school grounds until later that afternoon, and when I did, slipping past the front gate porter, I ran to the village. Maggie. You're going to get me into trouble coming in here like this. Listen to me. A detective is going to come here. He'll ask you a lot of questions. Me? Questions? Oh, no. There'll be questions about Bateman. Why? What's he done? He's been murdered. Murdered? Be quiet. You don't have to worry. But if you say anything about me... You killed him, didn't you? No, there's been a confession. Francis Ord, his roommate. It wasn't you? I told you no. Remember now, you don't know me. Oh, I won't say anything, I swear it. You won't hurt me, will you? You've never met me. You don't know my name. You don't know anything about me. All right, all right. When I left the dagger and drum... I felt that my secret was reasonably secure. I wanted a good excuse to have been away from school if anyone chanced to see me. So I had tea in the village, then went to the cinema. When I returned to Peckham House about ten o'clock... Uh, Mr. Vale. Oh, Inspector. Where have you been? Why, in the village, at the cinema. Would you uh, come with me, please? I don't quite understand. Francis Ord tried to commit suicide tonight. He's uh, been asking for you. Where is he? In his room. He'll be all right. Francis. Francis. Hello, sir. Well, this is a nice thing for the school, I must say. I'm sorry, sir. I thought it would be better this way. Better? I was afraid, sir. Afraid they'd make me talk about... Who's that with you? It's the inspector, Francis. There was no need for you to... Tell him, Francis. But he... I want him to know, Francis. It's all right. It's about you, sir. I know. I know. Bateman said things about me, didn't he? Yes, sir. You remember the examination when you caught us cheating? I remember. Well, he knew then about you and... The girl in the village? Yes, sir. I didn't want to believe him. But he said if I didn't help him with the exam, he'd, he'd tell something about you and, and you'd be arrested. So 
So you see, I had to. You were my friend, sir. And I, I knew that no matter what Bateman said about you, it couldn't really be bad. It was bad, Francis, because I was weak. I didn't have courage. You were the only friend I ever had, sir. I didn't want you to get into trouble. I was in the war, Francis. When I was wounded and they sent me home, the king gave me a medal. He thought I was brave because I'd helped some people. But when he gave me the medal, I wasn't brave any longer. I was a coward because I was taking medicine. And I couldn't stop taking the medicine. Yes, sir. Bateman found out I was buying it from Maggie's plane at the Dagon Drum. Isn't that what you were protecting me from? Yes, sir, but I... Francis, did you kill Bateman? Tell me the truth. No, sir. Go on. I... I went out for a walk that night. When I left, Bateman was all right. When I came home, you passed me on the stairs. And you didn't know me. You wouldn't talk to me. When I got in the room, Bateman was dead, lying on the floor. You're the only friend I ever had, sir. I, I couldn't. Uh, uh, that's enough talking, son. You'd better rest. Mr. Vale? Yes, yes. Good night, Francis. Good night, sir. I don't remember a thing that I did last night, Inspector. But when Francis confessed this morning, I thought he must have done it. But I was safe. Look at me. I'm the housemaster of Peckham House at Hoxley School. I won the Victoria Cross for bravery at Tobruk. And yet I almost allowed that boy to plead guilty for the murder which I committed. What medal will they bestow upon me for this bravery? Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Say, Wilcox, are you leaving? No, going, Senator. Going where? Going to tell our friends that the Autolite Stay Full battery is one of more than 400 products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats made by Autolite in 28 plants, coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many makes of America's finest cars. Generators, coils, distributors, voltage regulators, electric windshield wipers, wire and cable, starting motors. All engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. So, friends, don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite, original factory parts, at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next week on Suspense, Mr. William Holden as star of Blood on the Trumpet. And in weeks to come, you will hear such famous stars as Cary Grant, Ozzie Nelson and Harriet Hilliard, and Van Heflin, all appearing in tales well calculated to keep you in Suspense. Suspense is produced and directed by Elliot Lewis with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Herbert Marshall may be heard on his own radio program, The Man Called X. And remember next week on Suspense, Mr. William Holden in Blood on the Trumpet. You can buy Autolite Stateful Batteries, Autolite Standard or Resistor Type Spark Plugs, Autolite Electrical Parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite. Good night. One of the most cherished possessions we Americans have is our right to vote for representatives in all elective offices. They represent us, the American people. We should make every effort on Tuesday, November 7th, to vote for those we believe best qualified. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.